What is going on, everyone? This is Ryan with Automatic Comics. And in this video, I thought I would talk about something that I've gotten a couple comments about recently. So this is about auction sales results and the risks that you take when you are selling books at an auction and how you can do a little better with your odds uh, when, you're, <laughs> when you're dealing with that uh, so that you don't come out of it maybe so disappointed or disheartened, that kind of thing. So let's get into this. We're gonna talk about some books that sold in this recent Heritage auction. All right, so before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. So the reason I decided to make this video is there is a regular watcher of the channel uh, and he commented on this video that he was selling one of the books that was in this heritage auction. And he was very disappointed in the sales number that he got. Disappointed! He was selling the Superman number one, the 5.0 restored copy. It sold for $48,000. He was clearly expecting more than that. And so he was disappointed with that sale. So what I thought I would talk about in this video is kind of what some of those risks are when you're dealing with auctions and how you can account for them and maybe make your experience if you're selling books a little better. Now, me personally, I tend to not auction books. I like to fix price books. I don't like the, the gamble that comes with it. For Because for sure, you can have a big win. People can fight over something. You can have you know a big outsized sale, but you can also have a disappointing sale. You can have a sale that goes well below what probably the market value is just based on who was there participating in that auction. And then you, it leaves you with that like bad taste in your mouth. So first, we're going to talk about this Superman number one. So I'm going to add this book up here. So we've got the Superman number one here. It was a 5.0 moderate professional restoration. It's got the old label. And I had talked to him like just in the comments briefly about this because I had thought he said he was going to try to have the restoration removed. Clearly, he didn't. It appears, at least based on this, that you could, in theory, have the restoration removed. You now, it's color touches, pieces replaced to cover, pages, and tear seals. Now, the thing is there, it's like that could maybe just destroy the visual appeal of this book. Maybe somebody that does restoration removal isn't really willing to do that. There are, you know, sometimes people don't want to destroy books that present well, and so they won't take on that work. Uh, so it's possible, but all those all those notes make it seem like you could get back to a blue label. And I've seen even wrecked blue labels, like 0.5s, which if, say, this goes down to a 0.5, if it's missing interiors and missing a bunch of the cover, uh, say it goes down to a 0.5. I think a 0.5 would sell for probably 80,000, somewhere in that range, 75 to 85,000. Like if we jump over to, to GPA and we look at a Superman number one, and for now, let's just look at the universals. We go down to the, the 0.5s. We had a coverless sell for 55,000. We have a 1.0 incomplete go for 138,000. This 1.0 go for 90,000. We had this 0.5 incomplete back cover missing go for 84,000 just in August. And so that's why like this one, I probably would have taken like, because it what, clearly wasn't even cracked out. Like it's still in the old case. So I don't know how you can be certain that this couldn't go back to a blue label because you would not get this recased in with the old label. Like I would have cracked this book out. I would have had somebody look at it. Yeah, you're going to have to pay a bunch of money to get it regraded again. I mean, that's definitely a gamble that you're taking there. But at least based on the notes, I would go like this might be worth it just to get this thing back to a blue label because this book in a 5.0 restored it's just it's never going to hit those types of numbers it's never going to hit that that in my opinion that 85 80 75 thousand type number it's just that visual you know the purple label just it, it hurts things and so i would have personally i would have taken that gamble i would have cracked it out and you know then you're gonna have to suck it up and pay a bunch of money probably up front uh, to have the restoration removal done and you know the regrading but to me that pays off as long as you can get to a blue label so you have that right there now, also, was this a disappointing sale? So the reason why uh, he felt that this was a disappointing sale was that there had been an auction very recently on Comic Link that I actually covered in another video. And if and this is one of those things like Comic Link sales don't get pulled in GPA, that definitely has some type of impact. 
But if you want to know where those are, now granted, you have to go like search through them manually. You can't use their search function. But if you want to go find them, you go look up on Comic Links page auction, look at prior auction results. And then you can go to the different years, the different auctions. They don't share every book. It's So it's just like it tends to be the bigger stuff. And so you could go to this uh, Summer Featured Comics Auction 8924. Uh, and when you scroll down, and I'm not going to make you watch me scroll through all this, you'll eventually get to this Superman number one, which was a 4.5, all three edges trimmed that sold for 62888 Now, the reason I talked about this sale in my prior video was that this seemed like a very, very high sale to me for a restored, all edges trimmed book. And so this is one of those things where it's like, I don't feel like that is the the new market level for that book. That was to me a very high sale and I would not expect that sale to necessarily be repeatable. Meaning that I I don't think that this book was would sell again for 63,000 approximately if it came up. Now I do think that the, if we add the restoreds back in here, I do think that this sale was actually low. I, I think 48,000 was low. If you look at other books that have sold, we've got that are restored. We have a A4 cover trimmed, a 6O that went for 45,600, uh, but we had a 5O extensive professional go for 66,000 last year. We had a 5O uh, C5, so extensive, so that's extensive amateur go for 60,000. Now, so so 48 seems low. I think this book probably should so, should have sold more around 60. If if the with the market, you know, more around 60. I would not be surprised if the person that bought this book is going to try to get it back to a blue label. I wouldn't at all. But the question is, how do you avoid situations like this? So I have priced books out for people before to assist in their preparation for auctions. To me, one of the big keys in approaching an auction is to not just sell one book. If you go in there just selling one book, your likelihood of being disappointed in the auction results is pretty high. For example, when I priced out books for this heritage auction, of the ones that I priced out, it was about 60% that went above my estimates and 40% that went below. If you just list one book and you end up in that 40%, you're going to be disappointed with the outcome of this auction. But if you put in, say, five books or 10 books, then your odds improve that you're going to have some books that outperform, some books that underperform, and overall, you're going to be generally happy with the outcome. And as long as the overall auction isn't weak, but if the overall auction is weak, that is what it is. But that's that's one of the ways that, uh, for, for example, for someone else that I priced books for, they had one book that went well below what we thought it should have gone for, but then they had a few other books that went well above what we thought they'd go for, and overall, they were happy with the outcome. You know, but if they had just listed that one book, you know, they would have got, they would have left that auction probably very, very disappointed. And so that's, that's kind of my, my little approach that I would recommend with auctions. I do the same thing when I am, uh, when I'm auctioning off lots, that's the only time I auction off on eBay is when I'm auctioning off or typically when I'm auctioning off lots of books, maybe like leftover books from a collection or something like that. I just do multiple auctions at once. Some of them definitely, you know, go below what I think they should go for. And some of them are stronger. And then I'm just like, okay, you know, all averages out. It's fine. But if you go in there with just one book, I, I mean, I, I just, I don't recommend it. You never know. I mean, for example, we had a, what was it? It was like six months ago. There was a, a Batman one that went like a hundred thousand dollars below what you thought it would. <laughs> it's like you have that one book that goes in there. And it massively underperforms. And if that's your book, you're extremely upset. So uh, just having a good book. I mean, this is a Superman number one. And it's a good looking Superman number one. Like, I'd be happy to have this book at 48 grand. And so just it does not guarantee you anything, no matter the caliber of the book that you come in there with. And so just something to think about. I'm not trying to say like, oh, give more of your books to you know an auction house or anything like that. But that is how I would personally approach auctioning. If you're going to go to, you know, send books to an auction, send like 10, 
you know, of approximately similar values, you know, maybe so that if you have some go below, some above you, you know, that kind of thing. And now granted, it's tough to have if you have 10, $50,000 <laughs> comics, but, but that's the thing. Like if you just send one, I think you're, you're very likely to be disappointed. Now, the, the other one that I, I wanted to, just another example I wanted to talk about, and I talked about this some in the prior video, was the uh, Albedo number two. And so this is one where we know this was uh, Dave with Comic Book Investments. This was his book. He made a video that he was very disappointed in the sale. But, I mean, the reality is, if you look at the sales history for this book, and you go, uh, here, let's, let's look at Albedo number two. And... For a 9.8 here. Now, yes, there was this 9.6 sale for, for 33,600, which I've said I thought was a huge, huge outlier for that book. But if we go for the 9.8, I mean, 28,800 is the second highest sale of all time for that book. I mean, that's one of those things where I know uh, Mickey over at Swaggle House Comics, he made a video about this recently where say like comic boom sales, which I treated that, that sale that happened earlier this year, this $55,200 sale, even though it was 2024, I treated that as a comic boom sale basically because that book had not sold for so many years. And there was this, I feel like unrealistic pent up demand. And so you had a huge sale and then you got the correction very quickly, but still over the course of that four years, this book went up almost 50%. Like that is a big jump for that book. And when you look at back to 2018, six years, this book is up 4X, a little more than that. So to me, this is not a disappointing sale. To me, this is going into an auction with unrealistic expectations. And also, I don't know if he had other books in the auction, but it's it's only putting one book in. <laughs> you know, like if you only have one book in there and it goes below what you expect, it, it makes you think like, oh, this is just, this was horrible. This is bad. But in reality, when you look at the overall performance of the auction, it's actually quite strong. And so that's just one of those things. Again, like I just, if you're approaching an auction, I really don't recommend just sending in, in one book. I think it's just a recipe for disappointment. Now, the other thing I thought I would just share here, uh, just to kind of give you an idea how I, I do this. So I'll give you a little view into the uh, the the background for when I'm I'm going through these books and just so you can kind of see which books I had priced that went under uh, what I felt they should and so it's my little uh, spreadsheet right here and so the books that are highlighted here are the ones that I think these are all the ones I talked about in my in my prior video where I was talking about the performance of books in this uh, in this auction you can see here these are the so I, I priced 55 books down in the you know this spot down here. There were 34 that went above my estimate and there are 21 that went below. Uh, this number is just the, of the books that, that I was watching, they sold for about $11 million total. Uh, but these are the 21 books that went below my estimates. And you can see uh, for the ones I was talking about, yellow, yes, it went below my estimate, but it was so close that I don't even really consider it that much as like a bad sale. It basically went right around what I thought it would. Like this Amazing Fantasy 15, 4% below. Uh, the Teen Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one, three percent below. The All Star eight here was one percent below. You know those aren't disappointing sales really to me. But then when you start looking at these percentages, you get the you know ones that are a little bit bigger. We had the that first All Star eight I talked about was fifteen percent below what I was expecting. We get down into some of these. We had that Amazing Man twenty two, which was twenty percent below the Captain America one. That one to me was a, a big disappointment for a big book. And that's 24% below what I thought it would go for. And so I, I would think like that's an example where you have like all these are pretty big books. But that's like a Captain America one. You know, that first one, an all-star comics number eight. I mean, first Captain America, first Wonder Woman. And in reality, like pretty disappointing sales. But that doesn't mean that everything, you know, that everything was was bad. Like, I mean, we had this one, this Wings Comics 91, this 9-4. I thought that was going to go for 7,500, only went for 4,320. I mean, 42% below. But if we then take a look at, uh, so if we take a look at the ones that, that performed well, now we start seeing like, this is actually quite a few more. And so, yes, you could have had your books fall into that category where they underperformed. But then if you had multiple books in the auction, your likelihood of, then having books outperform as well is also much higher. 
And so this is why I would, you know, I would approach it like that personally. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you can see like quite a few books that had some pretty big outsized sales from what I was expecting them to. I mean, this one I talked about the Startling 49, 112%. Uh, this one I talked about the Marvel Super Heroes 20, 107%. This one here, the Superman 2, 73% more than what I thought. I, I mean, that book had a record sale of 42,500 prior to this, sold for 78,000. I mean, there were some big sales. This one right here, the uh, Mass Comics number one, 65% over what I thought. The Phantom Lady 23, uh, the Jack Kamen cover, 66% over what I thought. That book in, it had had prior sales that it seemed like that book was kind of like trending back down. And then this sale was just really big and, and strong. And so you can't predict who is going to be in that room at any given time and who is going to, uh, you know, be bidding and, and willing to bid on those books. And so that's why if you are auctioning, if that's the approach you take, again, I just, I recommend sending multiple books to improve your likelihood of having a better day. Now, granted, they could all end up in that, in the lower end. That is a possibility too. That can also happen, but this is just how I feel about, you know, about auctions, the risks that you, you can, you take with them, but also how you can try to uh, mitigate that risk a little bit. But Hopefully you enjoyed this video, got something out of it. If you are someone that, you know, that auctions off books, especially some of these big books, but it doesn't even matter if it's a big book. Like it could be a $500 book, a hundred dollar book, a thousand dollar book. It's still it, the same rules apply. Uh, but if you're somebody that that's looking to send books to auctions, I mean, you got to look at what, how that, that auction house is set up, what their fee structure is that all matters as well, but then try to improve your odds by sending multiple books uh to to not having a bad day in the auction because otherwise then you know i see comments and people are disappointed and happy and just try to help you avoid running into those situations so hopefully you enjoyed this video if you did please hit that like button subscribe button notification bell and i will see you on the next one